Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Have a look at this video. We're on the space station in a no-gravity situation and what is going on here? Where is the trick? The screw is following a completely unnatural movement. Who is it? This phenomenon is called the Zanibakov effect and it's a surprising result coming straight out of rotational dynamics. It is most obvious in the absence of gravity, like in the clip at the start of this video, because the object is not falling under the gravitational force. But this effect does work here on Earth as well. So, if you find this topic interesting, why not subscribe to the channel? It really helps me and my channel out. But now, let's dive right into it. I remember seeing this effect for the very first time during my first year at university, when my professor in the mechanics course put its own brand new Ivan 5 on the line to prove the effect in front of us. I'm not sure whether it was the physics behind it that struck me, or the realization of how much well-off professors must be to put their latest tech gadgets on the line for a demonstration like this. But either way, the whole thing has stuck in my head since then. That was part of a massive course, the most important one in the whole first year, so we won't have the time to go through the whole physics and mathematics behind this phenomenon here. However, we'll go through the short version of things. First things first. When a body is rotating, an imaginary line is created, called the axis of rotation, which comprise all the points that do not move during the rotation. The easiest example would be the hub of a wheel, which stays still while the wheel is turning. What we need to understand next is that any rotation of a rigid extended body can be decomposed into the rotation around three axes of our choice, as long as they're not all aligned. This comes from linear algebra, and for those of you who are familiar with it, it's a direct consequence of the diagonalization theorem for square matrices. This is why, for example, in a plane, there are only three maneuvers, roll, pitch and yaw. All the others can be constructed as a combination of those three. This way, we only need to provide the airplane with three main control surfaces, one for each axis, but the pilot can always control the aircraft by combining them appropriately. The general result tells us that such the composition works for any choices of the three non-aligned axes of rotation, but it turns out that the shape of the body creates three preferred orientations for such axes, which are aptly called the principal axes of rotation of the body. Going back to our plane, this is the reason why all maneuvers are decomposed into pitch, roll and yaw. They are THE special maneuvers precisely because they correspond to rotations around the principal axis of rotation. In very much the same way, the screw in the clip at the beginning of the video will have a principal axis parallel to the threading and the other two perpendicular to it. Now, there is one other fundamental aspect. A pure rotation around a single principal axis is only possible in theory. Every physical rotation will combine a rotation around all three axes. Even if we try as hard as we can to align the motion in such a way that it aligns perfectly, we will introduce microscopical errors. Things like the stickiness of the launch surface will drag on one side of the object down, the air resistance will deviate the object from a perfect trajectory, and so on and so forth. Now, the three principal axes can be ordered by the strength needed to make the object rotate around them. Think, for example, to this chopstick. It's very easy to make it rotate along this main axis, the one parallel to its longest side, but much harder to make it rotate around one of the other two. The specific terminology is the moment of inertia. The higher the moment of inertia around one axis, the more resistance the body opposes when trying to make it rotate around the respective axis, and the more difficult it is to make it rotate in that direction. The smaller the moment of inertia, the easier it is to make the object rotate in that direction instead. So now that we have ordered the three principal axes of rotation, we can go in for the kill. The Zanibakov effect is just a result of the median axis 
being an unstable axis of rotation. What this means is that a small rotation around a stable axis will continue to stay small, but one around an unstable axis will become larger and larger. Now, because one axis is unstable and no rotation is pure, any rotating body will have a rotational component around the unstable axis. This means that in that direction, the rotational error will increase in time. This is exactly what we saw in the clip at the beginning of this video, in the very foundation of the Zanni-Baker effect. The screw is rotating around the middle principal axis, which is unstable. The instability is the cause of the surprising motion, and the absence of gravity is compounding the effect by letting the screw stay in the same position while all of this happens. If you're interested in the subject, some keywords for further analysis include rotational dynamics, principal axis, and Euler's equation for rigid body dynamics. I will put some links in the video description as well. A word of warning though, there is a lot of material around this topic and the rabbit hole gets deep very, very quickly. So there you have it, my analysis of the Zanni-Baker effect, which is also called the tennis racket theorem. For those of you who are still listening, thank you very much for sticking around until the end of the video. I hope you found this video interesting. Feel free to reach out to me on my social media accounts. My handle is the same across all platforms. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this coming out twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays. Until next Sunday, goodbye.